The adobe's my birthstone. The adobe? It is more than just a brick. It is the good earth upon which men and women have trod for so many centuries. The water upon which mankind has depended since life was created. And upon this earth and water, the sun has cast its radiant beams to unite the mixture. Earth, water, sun. País, agua, sol. These adobe walls nurture me now as they did in that hour of my birth when the good doctor asked my mother my name and she pronounced it so proudly. Leopoldo Antonio Carrillo. In 1937, Broadway actor and Hollywood star Leo Carrillo purchased land adjacent to the historic Rancho Agua Hedionda in northern San Diego County and started building his family's weekend retreat. Until his death in 1961, the man known around the world as Mr. California raised cattle and crops, entertained, and lived here in the tradition of his Spanish and Mexican forefathers and the spirit of old California. A portion of Carrillo Ranch was acquired by the city in 1977 and eventually became Carlsbad's only double-designated historic site with a listing on the National Register of Historic Places and as a California Historic Landmark. In 2003, the Leo Carrillo Ranch Historic Park was opened to the public. In keeping with Carrillo family hospitality, the people of Carlsbad invite you to visit the park in person, and they join Leo in extending a heartfelt Bienvenidos Amigos. Native Americans lived in these coastal areas for thousands of years before Spanish explorers arrived in the late 1700s. The Luceno Indians are the most recent Native American group to live here. They lived in independent village groups, each with a defined area for collecting, hunting, fishing, and small-scale horticulture. Villages were usually located near freshwater sources. Sites used by the Luceno have been identified here in the park. By 1875, a majority of the remaining native peoples had been forced by government order to relocate to reservations, nearby towns, or ranches. In 1842, after Mexico gained independence from Spain, Alta California was divided into large ranchos and Juan Maria Marone, a retired sea captain, received the Agua Hedionda land grant and built an adobe dwelling near a spring. In 1870, this rancho became the property of Robert Kelly, who had immigrated from the Isle of Man. Robert's brother, Matthew, and his family homesteaded adjacent land, and in 1882 they built a two-story adobe house. Matthew's nine children eventually inherited the Rancho Agua Hedionda and divided it up among themselves by pulling numbers from a hat. They owned the land until it gradually passed into other hands. In 1937, Leo Carrillo was at the height of his Hollywood film career, playing supporting and character roles and earning $4,000 a week. Born in 1880 near Olvera Street in Los Angeles, Leo was a champion swimmer and studied engineering in college. He worked on the railroad and as a newspaper cartoonist before his comic and acting talents were discovered and he turned to the stage, appearing in 15 Broadway plays. In Hollywood, he eventually appeared in more than 90 films. He was part of an old and respected California family. His forefathers included an early settler of San Diego, a governor of Alta California, and a mayor of Los Angeles. He was proud of his Hispanic heritage and Californio identity and was determined to live a Western lifestyle that honored and celebrated it. When he and his wife Edith and daughter Antoinette yearned to find a weekend home away from cramped Hollywood, he headed south, looking for something special, someplace rural and romantic. I wanted a climate that was mild where I could see the ocean. I would like to get an old adobe and put it back where it was 100 years ago. We drove down back of Carlsbad. It was spring. The house was abandoned, but it was adobe. 
I looked down at the view, the rolling hills, the little valley, and I said, if there is enough water there, I would like to buy it. Leo bought the adobe house and the acreage surrounding it. He would come down on weekends and sit on the hillside, dreaming and planning. A chance meeting with Cruz Mendoza, a carpenter and adobe builder, led to Leo hiring him and his sons to build his dream ranch. They tore off the wood siding on the old Kelly adobe house and used the remaining adobe walls and foundation as the core for constructing the rambling L-shaped hacienda you see today. Leo designed and constructed farm, ranch, and other structures, including a pool and cabana, a carriage house, a cantina, a barn with stables, and Didi's house, a Pueblo-style dwelling for Edith. By 1940, Leo had turned his weekend getaway into a working rancho, with 600 head of cattle and dozens of horses roaming the vast meadows. Peafowl strutted and preened, admiring themselves in the mirrors Leo put on the grounds for that purpose. Now 60, Leo was proud to show off his 2,500-acre rancho to his famous friends and entertained grandly. Stage and screen celebrities enjoyed weekends of outdoor barbecues and calf roping at what Leo named the Flying Elsie Ranch. He also became more involved with politics and public service during these years and was encouraged to run for governor. His interest and experience in preserving and conserving the Los Quiotes property also benefited the people of California. Leo served on the California Beaches and Parks Commission for 18 years and played a key role in the state's acquisition of Hearst Castle at San Simeon and the Anza Borrego Desert State Park. He was instrumental in the purchase and restoration of the Olvera Street Adobe in Los Angeles, near his birthplace. He was eventually made a goodwill ambassador by Governor Edmund G. Brown and traveled the world promoting California. As a result of his service, the Leo Carrillo State Park, west of Malibu on the Pacific Coast Highway, was named in his honor. Then, in 1950, at the age of 70, the time in life when most seek retirement, Leo's career took an incredible and dramatic turn. Here's adventure! Here's romance! Here's O. Henry's famous Robin Hood of the Old West, a disco kid! As Pancho, he played opposite Duncan Ronaldo Cisco in the wildly successful TV series, The Cisco Kid. Say, you haven't said a word in two hours. She's go riding on so much dust, I got a little horses in my throat like you have. The series ran from 1950 to 1956 and was the most popular filmed children's series of its day. <laughs> oh, Pancho! Oh, 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 Cisco! <laughs> Buoyed by his TV success and public appearances at parades, fairs, and rodeos, Leo's recognition and popularity reached an all-time high, especially among children. Leo was riding high, usually on his favorite Palomino, Conquistador. But at the peak of his popularity, Dee Dee passed away, and much of the gaiety left the ranch for Leo. He spent less and less time at the Flying L.C., his own health worsened, and in 1961 he passed away at the age of 81, family and friends at his bedside. As one admirer noted, his life is a page in American history. Daughter Antoinette inherited the ranch. She steadily sold off acreage, living on the small remaining family parcel until the late 70s, when ownership was transferred to the city of Carlsbad. It was then that the subsequent owners of the valley dedicated the first ten and a half acres for future parkland. An additional 17 acres were donated when construction began on the homes in Rancho Carrillo, and the city went to work stabilizing, preserving, and restoring the historic buildings and infrastructure. The city's efforts were greatly helped by volunteers and a nonprofit educational organization, the Friends of Carrillo Ranch. 
Today, you can discover for yourself the romance and tranquil beauty of this Carlsbad treasure. Secluded in the heart of a magnificently landscaped 27-acre canyon, this park contains and protects handcrafted adobe buildings, antique windmills, a reflecting pool, and many other beautiful structures where you can explore and experience California history. You will delight in gorgeous agave, bougainvillea, birds of paradise, plentiful trees, and the company of dozens of brilliant peacocks who still call the ranch home. The public can also enjoy many city-sponsored annual events at the park, featuring Western demonstrations, vintage films, arts and crafts, and period holiday festivals. Local fourth graders are entranced when they visit as part of their state history courses, and each summer the park hosts art classes and camps. In addition, the Carrillo Park has served as the venue for outdoor weddings, receptions, family reunions, corporate and nonprofit fundraisers, or other special events. The park is here for everyone's education and enjoyment. Leo would want it no other way. I have spoken my lines, país agua sol. Earth, water, sun. These are the simple things, the true things, the good things. Now, amigos, perhaps you understand why the adobe is my birthstone. Here on the rancho of the Spanish daggers amid the mellow adobe walls, I cherish thoughts of long ago mingled with plans for the future. On my doorstep is a message of welcome. Su casa, amigo. I mean that. Su casa, amigo. My house is yours, friend. <laughs>